Folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast live stream. We've been going live with you the past few days as Israel and Iran quite literally are on the brink and everyone's kind of holding their breath and waiting for the Israeli response to the unprecedented, yes, unprecedented Iranian attack on Saturday night, April 13th. Look, folks, at least 350 projectiles, ballistic and cruise missiles, and attack drones launched at Israel. And by the way, today, uh, Benny Gantz, who is in the war cabinet, said that actually it was over 500 projectiles when you factor in Iran's proxies, the Houthis, Hezbollah, the Shia militias in Syria, who also rained rockets and drones down on Israel. So hey, yes, show you some... on one hand, we had... Uh, one second here. Sorry about that. There you go. On one hand, we had Iran with 350, but in the proxies, it equaled to around 500, at least according to Israel. So it makes what happened on Saturday night, April 13th, folks, even more miraculous. I don't say that word lately. 99% of these incoming projectiles were intercepted, 500 in all, and 99% intercepted. These were not just, again, slow-moving attack drones and those Shahed 136 Iranian drones are slow moving and cruise missiles, which travel at a slower rate, but, but ballistic missiles are a different story. And at least 100 ballistic missiles were launched from Iranian territory towards Israel. And again, 99% intercepted. The God of Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. And yes, of course, Israel, incredible missile defense systems, the Arrow Missile Defense System, David Sling, and of course, Iron Dome, and of course, the U.S., U.K., Jordan, and yes, Saudi Arabia, all chipped in in intercepting these incoming Iranian projectiles. And yet, folks, a 99% success rate, uh, pretty impressive. And when it comes to Israel, nothing is by chance and nothing is by coincidence, which brings us to the breaking news right now. According to the Jerusalem Post, I want to read directly from this piece in the J Post. I do not want to misquote. The IDF, the Israel Defense Forces, have decided on their response. Now, for the past 48 to 72 hours, many of us have been awaiting and saying, OK, Israel, you must respond here, because if you don't, the Iranian regime will be absolutely emboldened and they'll do it again and again. They'll duplicate or try to duplicate what they did on Saturday night, April, April 13th, but maybe next time they're successful, God forbid. Bullies understand only the language of force. And if Israel does not draw a very clear line in the sand here, again, Iran's going to continue to do this. Yes, we reported on yesterday's live stream. And by the way, if you miss any of our posts here on the Watchman YouTube channel, just be sure to subscribe. It's absolutely free. Click the subscribe button, click the notification bell so you get alerts every time a new video is posted. Hey, in times like these, Bible times, prophetic times, and when news breaks out of the world's most volatile and chaotic region, the Middle East, we're coming to you on a regular basis. So make sure to click that notification bell every time we pop up here with a new update. You will know you'll be alerted. Okay, but we said yesterday that, and you can find it under newscasts here on the homepage, Iran... Its top officials are boasting, they're gloating, they're gloating about those indelible images, in a sense, in my mind, of those ballistic missiles over Jerusalem, over the Temple Mount, which were shot down, but to Iran, it was still a great victory. The optics of Iranian missiles over the Temple Mount cannot be understated for their global propaganda purposes. That's first, but secondly, and perhaps even more importantly, Iranian officials made very clear yesterday this is only the beginning in that they say Iran's entire strategic calculus has now changed. Before, yeah, Iran was acting through proxy. Hezbollah, Hamas, the Houthis, the militias in Iraq and Syria, Hamas and Islamic Jihad until Israel went about the business of smashing them in Gaza. They were strangely quiet on Saturday night as this barrage commenced against Israel, and that's because the IDF basically has Hamas right now in a stranglehold, and the last bastion of resistance there is Rafah, major resistance. And that day is coming when the IDF will root out Rafah as well and hopefully finish the job of crushing Hamas once and for all. But I digress. Iranian officials said, look, the strategic calculus has changed, and now we have established 
new lines and a new way of doing things, meaning we attacked Israel directly from Iranian soil for the first time in 45 years, 45 long, hard, arduous years for the Iranian people since this wicked regime took power in 1979. But this was the first time ever that we launched directly. It's a new day, or so Iran's leaders are saying. And right now they're saying, hey, we did it. It's been 72 hours, and we haven't paid a price. We got away with it. And yes, we'll talk about this more. The U.S. and Europe are saying, oh, we're going to impose crippling sanctions. Where have I heard that before? But you lifted the sanctions, guys and gals, in the White House and in Europe. You lifted them under the Obama administration. The Biden administration lifted some as well. So now suddenly you're going to get tough and enforce them. Sorry, the appeasement message was already sent years ago, and Iran got the memo. Hence, 350 projectiles and an additional 150 launched by its proxies on Saturday night. So Iran now says, hey, if you do anything to pretty much make us mad or offend us, we're going to fire at you, Israel, directly. And folks, I got to tell you, those missiles and on the Stackelbeck Tonight program, tonight on TBN, you're going to want to see this. Uh, Israeli spoke, military spokesman in front of these massive Iranian ballistic missiles that fell. Some got through. 99% intercepted. Incredible. But a few got through. 99% is not 100%. And I just kept thinking as I'm looking at these ballistic missiles that the IDF was displaying today, man, oh, man, imagine if those missiles were nuclear tipped. Because that's the goal. That's why Iran is racing headlong toward the world's deadliest weapon, towards a nuclear bomb. And folks, they don't seem to care very much about the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock. They preach about liberating Al-Aqsa. And the Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khamenei tweeted this out yesterday. But isn't there a very good chance when Iranian ballistic missiles are above the Temple Mount that they may fall and hit the Temple Mount? And then what? So Iran's not too concerned, needless to say. And Israel, you could say Israel, I'll say it. Israel pretty much saved the Temple Mount on Saturday night, shooting down these incoming projectiles, possibly. We don't know where they were going to fall. So Israel, it was Israel, the Israel Defense Forces, that saved and preserved two Muslim holy sites on Saturday night, the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Shouldn't there be rage in the Muslim world? against Iran, if Al-Aqsa is the third holiest site in Islam behind Mecca and Medina and Medina in Saudi Arabia, and Iranian projectiles nearly hit it, shouldn't there be outrage in the Muslim world against Iran? Hmm. Interesting question. What do you think about that, folks? We have a very active chat here. Be sure to leave your comments. Let me know what you're thinking about everything going on. But Let's get to what Israel is saying right now from the Jerusalem Post, as I mentioned a minute ago. Let me preface this by saying, if Israel does not respond in a meaningful way here, what does meaningful look like? In a way that hurts Iran and hurts it hard, the Iranian regime. Then Iran will be emboldened to do it again, what they did Saturday night. That's number one. No one wants a wider regional war. And I wish it would never happen. But folks... I'll guarantee you one way it will happen if Israel does not respond here in a forceful way, because then Iran will be emboldened. And what a bully does is they push and they push and they push the envelope until the bullied party, and I'm not saying Israel's being bullied is the wrong term, but Iran's a bully. They operate how a bully operates. Israel's bullied by no one, but they're facing a regime that is a bully. And they're going to keep pushing the envelope until the victim of their onslaughts says no more and stands up and pushes back. If Israel doesn't do that, it guarantees war. October 7th proved deterrence does not work when it comes to Islamic jihadists. And Israel for years and years kicked the can down the road in Gaza and didn't confront Hamas forcefully like it had to after October 7th. Now in only six months, Hamas is in its death throes, kicking the can down the road and saying, well, we'll fight another day. 
sometimes it just doesn't work and history has shown that it showed it on october 7th sadly tragically and i believe if israel doesn't act here it will be shown once again as iran again will up the ante so to speak and they'll push even further so israel must send a forceful message at any rate here's what the jerusalem post is reporting the idf i'm just reading this right off my phone for you the IDF has decided how it will counter-strike Iran and its proxies, but has not yet settled on the timing, multiple sources told the Jerusalem Post today, Tuesday, April 16th. Because the timing is still variable, and because of all the necessary complex preparations, the current decision could change. This is according to the Jerusalem Post. However, the very development of a decision shows the severity and determination of Israel's leadership to strike back. Though all indications are that Jerusalem still seeks to tamp down its attack to avoid spiraling into a regional war. And I, I, I don't like in this modern age of warfare and in the social media age, obviously, where it's all prevalent, how moves and invasions are many times telegraphed. And the IDF chief of staff, Lieutenant General Herzi Halevi, hinted that the timing of the attack was not very imminent. He shouldn't hint that, in my opinion. He knows better than me when it comes to military matters, but as just a layman observing, man, Israel always does its best work when it has the element of complete shocking surprise. Witness the events of two weeks ago when it eliminated Mohammad Reza Zahadi, that top Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps general and along with several other generals. But Halevi said, and I quote, we are enabling a home front policy to at least give citizens this Passover week, and Passover starts next Monday, I believe that's the 22nd, to live almost like normal because we completely trust you and your readiness, end quote. And Benny Gantz, who's in the war cabinet, I mentioned him at the top, he said, look, at a time of our choosing, we will respond and and a, another IDF spokesman said today, look, uh, they're not going to, and I quote, Iran is not going to get away scot-free, unquote, end quote, I should say, uh, for what they did on Saturday night. But folks, what does that mean? What do you think? How should Israel respond here? And again, I, if Israel does not respond in any sort of meaningful fashion, it guarantees war in the long run because Iran will be emboldened. We have now set a new normal, Iran is saying. We can now attack directly from Iranian soil. We don't have to just rely on our proxies. Actually, we can combine our assets along with our proxies, our ring of fire that surrounds Israel on all sides that we've built up over the years. And in tandem with them, in conjunction with the entire ring of fire, the Houthis in Yemen, Hezbollah in Lebanon, the Shia militias in Iraq and Syria, whatever last gasps that Hamas and Islamic Jihad have left in them in Gaza, and perhaps even the Assad regime in Syria. I'm thinking Isaiah 17 and the end of Damascus, which the Bible says is coming, one of the world's oldest inhabited cities. Could Assad throwing his hat in the ring alongside Iran precipitate something like that? At any rate, that kind of assault is coming if Israel doesn't draw a clear land a line in the sand right now. We shall see. But right now, I can tell you that Anthony Blinken, the U.S. Secretary of State, is applying tremendous pressure on Israel. The leaders, or not the leaders, or top officials from uh, France and Britain are on their way to Israel as we speak, foreign ministers for both countries, to dissuade Israel from striking back. Italy... I don't know what's going on in Italy, folks. Georgia Maloney, her election, I was excited. She's conservative. This is good. She's a friend of Israel. Uh, she's been a bit disappointing in some ways. And, and well, she's not making these comments directly, although she did make some about the Palestinians and implying that Israel had a heavy hand. But her government it's, it's called on Israel today to, quote, act mature. So Israel needs to be mature, quote, mature. The mature response in their view, apparently, folks, and in the views of Western leaders, is no response at all. As Joe Biden said over the weekend, hey, you got the win. 
take the win, Israel. Just take the win. Just take it on the chin. Move on. You know, you, you've intercepted 99% of the incoming projectiles. Take the win. Until two weeks from now when Iran tries it again. And then again. And then again. Hey, folks, there's no guarantee that Israel will always have a 99% success rate, needless to say. Why take the chance? By the way, speaking of the proxies, folks, I really want you to know this and to check out the Stackelbeck Tonight Show tonight because we have a live on-the-ground report from the Israel-Lebanon border. Our correspondent, Yair Pinto. Now, if you watch the TBN Israel channel here on YouTube, you know and love Yair. He's got close to 700,000 subscribers, IDF reserve spokesman. You've seen him in uniform a bunch. Eloquent and great on-the-ground reporting from on-the-ground in Israel. Yair's been in Khan Yunus, in Gaza City, the Lebanon border, everywhere. Well, today he was on the Lebanon border. And let me just say that he personally witnessed a Hezbollah drone and rocket attack. He was a stone's throw away, and he and his team had to run and take cover. You will see that tonight on Stackelbeck Tonight. You will see this attack and the on-the-ground report from Yair in real time as it happened. You won't want to miss this. You'll really see what Israel's up against and the people of northern Israel tonight. My nightly program, every Monday through Friday, every weeknight, it's called Stackelbeck Tonight. It airs at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time and re-airs at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time on TBN. Catch it on TBN, on cable. If you still have cable, you didn't cut the cord, you can watch it on TV. I'm old school. I like to do that. Or you can watch the TBN app. It's called TBN Plus. TBN Plus, tbnplus.org. At any rate, watch it. You're going to want to see this, folks. Yair Pinto, our good friend from TBN Israel. He's a Stackelbeck Tonight correspondent. Ducking rocket fire, Hezbollah rocket fire. And what precipitated this, folks, this is the second part of our title today. Hezbollah attacked northern Israel today. Now you might say, oh, what's new? You know, they've been doing it since October 8th. Indeed. But Israel today reportedly eliminated two top Hezbollah commanders. Now, I don't have their names yet, but folks, is this part of Israel's response? Targeting the proxies. And the piece I just read to you from the Jerusalem Post was pretty clear Israel's response won't just target Iran. It's response to April 13th. It's not going to just target Iran. It's going to target Iran's proxies as well. And that's a very key point. So was today part of that response? Hezbollah was hurt today. Two top commanders, including apparently Hezbollah's coastal commander along the Mediterranean Sea, were taken out by the IDF. Hezbollah responds by firing three suicide drones into northern Israel, and I think three Israelis were hurt. No one killed, thank God, but there were some injuries. Folks, this is far more the Iran Hezbollah situation to the north, just so you know, or I should say the Israel Hezbollah situation. It's far more than just kind of tit for tat and skirmishes. I've heard the word skirmishes used. Listen, hundreds of Hezbollah jihadists have been killed by the IDF since October 8th. When Hezbollah, very key point, launched an attack, essentially launched the beginning stages of a great northern war against Israel. Hezbollah didn't have to throw its hat in the ring, but they chose to. Israel did not strike Hezbollah first, just as Israel did not strike Hamas first on October 7th. If you remember, folks, on October 6th, everyone clamoring for a ceasefire right now, there was a ceasefire on October 6th. Hamas willfully and intentionally broke that ceasefire with the act of urging and participation and support and training of the Iranian regime. Those are called facts. And they're a stubborn thing, as Ronald Reagan once said. October 8th, the same thing. The next day, after October 7th, Hezbollah begins launching, and they haven't stopped in six months, over six months now. There are about 100,000 Israelis. Folks, wrap your heads around this. Not only in southern Israel along the Gaza border, tens of thousands of Israelis evacuated. They're just starting to trickle back to their homes after over six months. But up north, I'd argue it's even more dire in that 100,000 still evacuated. No one's going home up north. Would you? If you lived in a great community like Matula, Kiryat Shimona, some of the other beautiful communities in northern Israel, which I love so dearly, I've been there many times, they're beautiful. I mean, would you go home? If Hezbollah is still essentially perched on Israel's northern border 
and raining down rockets on a daily basis, killing people. Israeli civilians and soldiers have been killed in northern Israel as a result of these Hezbollah rocket launches and drone launches. Uh, would you go home? Of course you wouldn't. Until Hezbollah's dealt with decisively. And Yair Pinto, you'll see him tonight on Stackelbeck tonight on TBN. Again, 7.30 Eastern, 10.30 p.m. Eastern time, twice per night. Yair said, look, Eric, I, I don't see how we resolve this and get these 100,000 Israelis back home and get northern Israel moving again, get the economy up there moving again, unless we deal with Hezbollah. And I mean deal decisively with Hezbollah. To me, folks, not only the, on the Hezbollah front, but on the Iran front writ large. Now is the time. Listen, Israel's on war footing, no doubt, since October 7. You've had hundreds of thousands of reserves called up, battle-hardened, battle-tested, at the ready. The nation is unified. It's resilient. It's shoulder-to-shoulder. I don't know that this window will come along again for Israel. If Israel kind of sits on its hands here and allows Hezbollah to live to fight another day, essentially at full strength, Although, I, I, as I've said, Hezbollah has taken some major, major lumps over the past six months. Look, several top Hezbollah commanders and officials have been killed. But it's still a, an organization that's tens of thousands strong of well-armed, battle-tested jihadi fighters. And not only that, folks. Listen, precision-guided munitions, PGMs for short. What does that mean? Well, they do exactly what their name says. They're designed to hit the target with greater accuracy and greater precision. And that's exactly what these PGMs will do. So does Israel just wait as they did on October 7th and say, well, you know, they're deterred. They wouldn't dare do what Hamas did. No, Hezbollah wants to duplicate what Hamas did, but better it in their view. By several magnitudes. And guess what? Hezbollah has the ability to do exactly that. Tens of thousands. They're another level, a different beast. And I use that word appropriately, a much different beast than Hamas. And they've got assets and, and PGMs. And our friend Elliot Chodoff, IDF Reserve Major, you've seen him here in the Watchmen. He believes Hezbollah has 350,000 rockets and missiles. I don't know if it's that much, but it's a lot. So, folks, look, I'm going to run right now and do some more Stackelbeck tonight filming. Keep Israel in your prayers. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We're on pins and needles, in a sense, awaiting for Israel's response. Maybe it's after Passover. Maybe it's two weeks. Maybe there's the element of surprise, which is always a good thing. As I said earlier, I don't like to see things telegraphed. What do you think? Leave your comments here. We have a great active chat going on. We've got over 10,000 people with us now. And we'll do it again tomorrow, by the way. So got to cut a little bit early today, but never fear. We will be back with you tomorrow. Okay, let us know what you think here. We're monitoring this chat. How does Israel do this? How does Israel go about cyber attacks? Some have mentioned and hitting the proxies, hitting targets in Tehran. Iran's nuclear facilities, is that on the table? What's Israel going to do here? All I know is in doing so, if they do it the right way, they'll actually prevent a major war because Iran will receive the message and will not make the same mistake twice that they made on Saturday night. Right now, they don't think it was a mistake, the Iranian regime. Israel has to show them, oh, it was a mistake. And here's what we have. Much to discuss to be continued tomorrow right here on the Watchman Newscast. Until then, God bless you and remember, never hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss an upload. And tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. And don't forget to share your thoughts, insights, and comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.